Now, I'm sure that many of you will be thinking, what's the difference between a container and a virtual machine? Well, the difference, and it is a big difference, is that a container does not contain a full operating system. And therefore, it's much lighter and much more efficient than running virtual machines. Let's say, for example, that you're running on a Linux-based operating system. Now, you can develop in Docker on Windows and Mac, and in fact, I'm recording this course on a Windows-based operating system. But for reasons that will become obvious shortly, it's easier to think about Linux when we think about the architecture of Docker. So I'm simplifying here, but the main part of the Linux operating system, well, any operating system really, the main part of the operating system, which handles the low-level services such as memory management, device drivers, and so on, is called the kernel. Now, when we launch a container, the container is running on top of your host operating system's kernel. And actually, if you want the real low-level detail, the container is actually just a process running on your kernel. So although a container might feel like a full virtual machine, it's not a full virtual machine because it doesn't contain its own operating system. Now, there is quite a common confusion here. As you can see from my caption here, I have included in my container a graphic representing Ubuntu. And that's because each container does contain its own distribution, its own Linux distribution. So I might have one container here running Ubuntu and a stack of applications. I might have another container running at the same time, which has its own distribution. In this case, this is the CentOS distribution. And of course, I could go on. Here I have a third container running MySQL, which happens to be bundled with the Red Hat Linux distribution. Now, the common source of confusion here is that people look at this and think, well, hang on, you're including operating systems inside your containers. It's important to understand that these are not operating systems. Ubuntu, CentOS, and Red Hat Linux are just sets of applications and tools. When you get hold of, let's say, an Ubuntu installation DVD, what you have on that DVD are, are broadly two things. You have on there a suite of applications that the Ubuntu developers have decided is a good collection of tools and utilities. And it also includes a copy of the Linux kernel. Now, when you see that a container contains Ubuntu, all we're saying there is that the container contains the Ubuntu collection of tools and utilities. So it's going to be things like, I don't know, the cat command or the text editor or the package manager that you can use for installing software are all part of the Ubuntu distribution. And there'll be a slightly different set of tools in the CentOS distribution and in the Red Hat distribution. But none of these containers contain the Linux kernel. And it's the Linux kernel that, I am being very simplistic here, but it's the Linux kernel that is the big heavyweight component. So in other words, your containers share the same Linux kernel. So that's the reason why running containers is not the same as running virtual machines. When you spin up a virtual machine, it will have its own kernel. And for that reason, virtual machines are heavy and you will struggle to run many virtual machines on a typical development machine. Containers are much lighter and you can run many more of them. So at a technical level, a container is not a virtual machine, but I'll say this quite quietly because it would offend a lot of Docker experts. But you know what? A container kind of feels a bit like a virtual machine. 
in the sense that it feels to us as developers that it's fully self-contained and stands on its own. Actually, it isn't completely self-contained because all of your containers are talking to your one Linux kernel. In the next chapter on installation, I'll talk about how this picture differs if you're running on a Windows or Macintosh development machine. So this means then, instead of the horrible scenario that I described at the start of this chapter, if we make it so that instead of building a WAR file and handing that over for deployment, we build a Docker image instead, then it's easy for the deployer. They just run the container on their target hardware, assuming they have Docker installed, of course. And because the container contains all of the necessary configuration and environment, it will just run. By the way, I should mention that these containers are actually nothing new and they weren't invented by Docker. In fact, containers have been a feature of the Linux kernel since around 2008. Now, I'm on the Wikipedia page here for LXC, which stands for Linux Containers. And this is described on the Wikipedia page as an operating system level, and that means kernel level, virtualization method for running exactly what I've just described, isolated containers on a single Linux kernel. Now, this LXC was introduced in around 2008, and yet Docker has been around since 2013. So really what we have here is a built-in feature of Linux, and Docker you can think of as being a kind of an elegant user interface or management system that's allowing you to get to these containers that your Linux kernel already supports. Now, I won't go into any more detail on this, but actually LXC isn't used now by default by Docker. They use a different scheme and strategy. I'll invite you to check out the Docker reference manual if you really want the low-level details of that. I just wanted to stress that Docker didn't really invent containers. It's kind of been there for a long time already. Now, I've been going on and on about Linux on this chapter, and I'm sure that many of you are using either Windows computers or Macintosh computers. So the big question is, are you going to be able to use Docker? And the answer is yes. But I think I'll defer that until the next chapter, because in the next chapter, we're going to be getting in Docker installed and running on your development computer. Now, I think this is the most complex part of learning Docker, to be honest. So <laughs> brace yourself for the next chapter. Once we've got over that, I hope you'll find working with Docker an absolute joy.